Hey guys, what's up? Real quick tip today. Um, I recently did a timing job on this 2008 F-150. Timed it perfect, I've done a million of these darn things. Go to start it up, everything runs fine, but it has, it's thrown a code, PO345 and PO349, which is basically uh, the camshaft signal on bank two is off, so it thinks the engine timing is off. Um, especially since you just did a timing job, the timing is probably off. Now usually after a while, they'll get a P0016 or 0018, which means the timing truly is off by one tooth or more. I was not getting that code. I know I know how to time these things after all these years. Um, so I did a few pre-checks on the scan tool and then I pulled the valve cover and just what I suspect it happened, happened. It's a really easy fix in the end though. Uh, I get a lot of questions about this. People do timing jobs on these engines, go through the whole process, they're happy, they spent all the money, and then all of a sudden they have new codes they didn't have before, and they use all the Ford parts. Um, so let's go to the scan tool, I'll show you the free, few pre-checks I did, and then a few tests you can do uh, before you start pulling the valve covers and the front cover and all that stuff to recheck your work. Uh, let's get to it. All right, here we go. Now, th these are the codes I'm getting currently. I was getting the 345 and the 349, basically the same thing. Cam signal on bank two is off. And uh, if you have the bank one issue, you'll get a PO340 or 344, I believe. Again, both same things. The signal coming from that cam sensor, um, which if you follow diagnostics will lead you through a bunch of pinpoint tests for the sensor itself. Believe me, these sensors never fail. So don't even try uh, to go after that. Go after your uh, actual timing work you did and see what happened, okay? So these are the codes I'm getting. And I'll show you right there, circuit bank two. No, it's not the circuit itself. And there's pending, so it's still there. And this will happen after about two key cycles. It'll come on right away, okay? Now the other thing I did, because uh, I had the scan tool, I, I checked the power balance, and it was just like this. I know it's off right now, uh, but it was smooth all the way across, which means you've timed the engine correctly. Now if the engine is off by one tooth or more, you'll get a slight miss from a few of the cylinders uh, that are affected uh, by that camshaft load being off. Same thing, um, I cleared codes, and then I did a relative compression test on here. Look at that. Zero all the way across, no difference, okay? That 1%, 2%, 3% is perfectly normal. No cylinders be perfect after 170,000 miles. So this right here also told me the thing is timed correctly, perfectly. Look at that, okay? Um, so I went to the data log around here, and I don't think it's going to show it because it's off right now. Uh, but let me clear all this out. I might bring it up. There you go. So the PIDs I brought up were, of course, the VCT duty cycle. I wanted to see when it was actually actuating the VCTs. Uh, but the big one you want to bring up on any basic scan tool is your error. Okay, this is bank one and bank two. Now, when it's just sitting there at idle, okay, they're not being actuated. So it's going to sit there right at zero if it's timed correctly again. So you'll see it right there, which means... Uh, the timing again is not off. See how we're doing all these little pre checks in the scan tool? Boom, one said timing's not off. Second one said timings can't be off. This thing says timing can't be off, and it all adds up. Okay, so you kind of get this, you know, all these clues like a detective, and you bring it all together. Okay, and you can get the full picture of what's going on here. Now, when the timing is off, okay, let's say it's a tooth off or so, it'll be like, let's say right here, and it'll be hovering right here instead of hovering right here, okay? Again, that would tell you if it's timing's off or not, truly off, okay? So, one of the other things that you can do uh, to rule out any kind of um, interference from the alternator, okay, is you're gonna come over here with the, the key off, and you see this alternator wire right here coming up and over, it's the B positive. There's the wires that connect to the alternator to control it from the PCM, you disconnect it right there. And then you follow it over, and I do it live. I'll uh, pull this nut off of here, 10 mil, and put it to the side, let it hang, retighten the nut back down, all back together. And then you go ahead and you start the engine up and see if it happens again. Again, two key cycles. Make sure you go over 1200 RPMs and then see if it comes back. Okay, on this one, I did that, and guess what? Still coming back every time, no sweat. So we have no interference from the alternator causing issues. Because this one I suspected it because it is aftermarket. 
Uh, so the other thing you can do, go in, clear codes, and you're gonna pull your electrical connector for your VCT solenoid, okay? And then you're gonna start it, you're gonna let it run without that. Now it's all mechanical, okay? There's no actual flow going to it. There's no actuation happening. Let's say you had a short to V ref or something on there, or V power, it's out of the equation. Now it's physical. It's locked in with a pin. It's good to go. Started it up twice, and of course came on again. At that point, it's time to pull the valve cover, and we can start looking at the timing here, okay? Now, the one thing you wanna look for on any phaser, forward or not, is make sure this center one one, two, three, is lining up with the L. That tells me the internals of the phaser are okay. Everything's locked in. It returns when the key is off like it should. That's a very first check on there. Now, the other thing I've experienced over the years um, doing all these, like last year I did 30 of these uh, timing jobs. Um, I've probably done 15 or 20 this year so far. It's only April. Um, is these tone rings on here, this is a Ford phaser, is these tone rings on here, I've seen them get bent. And last night I was working late, I was rushing, and um, I just kind of put it on there. I haven't seen one in a while. And I've seen these tone triggers right here get bent back, okay? Just the individual trigger straight out of the box from Ford. I don't know if it's a packaging error or what. Um, and this one, of course, I put on, torqued it down, everything's good to go, did the rest of it right, but I didn't do that pre-check. So look at these. You can look at these, these are all fine. They look fine, right? Fine, straight. Look at that guy right there. Yeah, you see it? You see how far back it's bent? Yep. Now, I don't get into it too much uh, with, you know, scope and the cam signal and all that stuff. Um, but I'm quite positive um, that one, two, three over here that match up to the L are what the PCM uses for uh, monitoring the left hand cam, uh, whereas these two are monitor used to monitor the right hand cam because these phasers are universal, left or right hand side. So it makes sense. This one, it's relying on one, two, three to be perfect and see it. You can see the cam sensor right there. It only reads out so far on there. Well, that one's bent far, too far back, and it's not picking up a reading from it. Okay, so it's basically getting one, two, empty, one, two, empty, instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and it constantly knows where it's at, where it's at, and how far the actual cam is phased in relation to basically this bracket right here that's timed to the engine. So boom, that was the problem right there. Okay, and I can, it, it, it's an easy fix. These don't get damaged far back enough where if you bend them back nice and straight, they're gonna cause a problem. Um, they're nice and strong on here. Um, so you just simply bend it back, look at it from a couple different angles, and make sure that it's good to go and not bent like that, and it's fixed. So it's one of the things you wanna watch out for whenever you're installing one of these phasers, um, especially from Ford. I've seen it probably four or five times in the last two years. That's why I usually pre-check them, but this time I didn't, and it bit me. But at least it's an easy fix. Left hand bank here, and this will be done and out the door.